Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the reaction review of Bleach of course, chapter 675. Uh, today's title is Blood for My Bone. So let's get started right off the bat, page one. Okay, so no matter, <clears throat> God I need to fix this voice. No matter the odds against him, now would, would you mind if I ask you a question? His arrows will never run out. So this is referring to Uryu. No matter how, basically, no matter how injured, no matter how, you know, hurt he may be, he, his arrows will continue, or his um will will continue to live on, no matter what happens to him. In any case, for that fact of the matter, let's continue. Um, okay, we see a lot of um, blooded. We see a lot of. Um, Pretty cool fan art, you know. So, okay, here we go. Let's up page five. Why are you so concerned about what kind of human I am? You never struck me as the type of person that would be in interested in such exist existential and abstract topic. Moreover, I'm certain you have already realized my true aim here was to buy time for Kurosaki to make his way to you, watch. So basically, um... He reveals his plan. His plan the entire time was basically to buy time for Ichigo to make it to Yu Watch's place. Or the tower he's currently at or the throne chair. So that way they can meet once and for all. So he can find out the truth. If there is any truth for there to be told in any case. And with that being said, let's continue. Let's see what was the whole idea for him to having um, Ichigo meet with Yu Watch in the first place. So instead of preparing me with these questions, wouldn't it be in your best interest to save every... Pre Precious second you can by eliminating me as quickly as possible and returning to the side of you watch. I feel like a broken record. I've told you I've already seen the results. Your allies will perish no matter how long or how quickly I pass the time away from away with you here. I will not be exposing his majesty to any kind of per perilous situation. So basically, just like you watch, he has his powers. He can see the future, quote unquote, the future. He can see into the future, quote unquote. And he says, because I can see the future, your friends will meet the ultimate demise at the hands of you watch. Or as they refer to him, his majesty, or some who refer to him as Stern Rider A, the Almighty. But Uryu, of course, at the top page six, he's smiling because I'm like this character here who just I call him this character because I really don't like this character at all. That Uriu is currently fighting, I really hate him. So I really don't call him by his actual original Stern Rider name because he thinks he's just like all smart ass and everything. I don't like smart asses. Um, but anyways, moving on. So um, Uriu smiles because he knows Ichigo is not the type of person to give up so easily, as is the case with most mangas. You know, when you have a main character, they don't give up so easily. You know. So basically, that's the theme pretty much in every manga I have read. I'm not sure that's everything every manga you guys have read, but I know my mangas that I've read is the same theme pretty much. The main character never gives up, continues to fight, and the will gets passed on to somebody else. So you've seen it, but the future you've seen can be changed, can it not? Just like when you were cut off, caught off guard by my help, by my most recent change. You are correct. So basically, he admits, although he can see the future, there's certain things you can do to change the future. Just like what you did earlier, because he makes it he makes it known the fact that even you watch has a weakness. And that's the smallest of change, or the smallest of things you can do that can change the future, can change everything, literally. And he makes it known here on page six that yeah, you can change it just with one small little thing. After all, when I use his majesty's power, I am but a vessel firing it. But as it per as pertains to his majesty, it is entirely different. Allow me to fill you in on the sobering details. What makes the Almighty truly terrifying is not merely its ability to see the future. So here comes the, the, the ultimate truth. He says the ability to see the future is not the thing you should be worried about the Almighty. It is something else. What do you mean? I'll finish telling you after we settle things here. Now then, the time has come to place everything you are upon, the scales Ishida with you. The one that blocks you from the road, you can never return down. Your broken scales. It's all coming to head. So basically, now it's all coming together. It's all conglomerating into this one big showdown. And basically, there's something he's not telling Uryu. But if you read between the lines, here's the thing. 
We have to fight. If you win this battle, I can tell you what that is. But if I kill you, there'll be no sense in telling you because you're dead. So basically, you read between the lines once um, you begins his battle right there and then with that Sturm Rider. You can clearly tell that um, he's basically telling him, you're going to have to win to get that permission off of me. Or I could just tell you while the battle is going on. But he wants him to fight him first, and then he'll tell him. And have things come to an end there and see who wins. So here we go. Blood, my bone. So we see Ichigo right here in page 8, of course. He's struggling regardless of him getting new power-ups and all of such. Wait, Kurosaki, please just calm down for a second. So Orihime is the only one that's thinking clearly right now. She's like, well, wait, you're going to have to calm down for a sec. I can't do much for you to keep running head on like that. I simply cannot understand why you are in such a rush to die. Is it because you fear is it because you fear showing me your true power? Is it the fear of having it stolen from you if you unveil it? Or are you sure you're okay with it ending like this, Ichigo? If you fall here, both the real world and soul society will meet their end by mine very own hands. So and as you remember earlier, you watched this plan was basically to destroy the real world and Serite as well. Uh, but there's an issue with that. He destroys both of these worlds. Pretty much a lot of things will cease to exist. And that's exactly what they're trying to stop. This disastrous plan he has from actually happening. Although he reveals a whole couple of times that um, he's Ichigo's father. But to what extent is it true, we do not know. Tell me, do those facts sit well with you, Ichigo? So he's having a conversation with him. Does it sit well? And we're going to find out what is exactly that sits well with him. Look, your comrade's answer to that very question is a re resound resounding no. As she heals you, she's telling you to fight. Answer me, Ichigo. As the voice of the powerless, for the weak, for those who wouldn't be able to breathe without you. So basically, he's letting him know, for those who cannot fight without you. So basically, he's telling him, you're the voice of those who cannot fight. So he's asking him a question. As those who cannot fight for their own well-being, you need to answer this question right now because the woman behind you keeps healing you and continuously you go head on into battle knowing for what you yielded the same result. But I have a feeling there's something Ichigo is going to do just like Uryu that changes the future just a bit. It might put you watching a tough situation. We don't know what that is for now, but let's see what it is. Stand tall, fight, and breathe your final breath. Because to tell the truth, I think you watch is sounding a bit over too confident. He's overconfident. So he may use as a shield. So his um, plan was to distract Ichigo from actually even being able to. What the hell is this? So from being able. Okay, sorry about that. I just got sidetracked there. So from being able to being able to actually um what you call it protecting Orihime overall. Speaking about drawing blanks, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not like I'm lost in it today, so I'm gonna try my best to hold it together. But otherwise than that, um he's basically using questions and, and these in these like meaningless, you know, distractions to actually prevent him from protecting um, Orihime, but, one, uh, but Orihime actually summons a shield right here in the bottom of page 15 and she's able to protect herself. Now to what extent she'll be able to hold it back is not known. Because it seems that he fights with his cloak instead of an actual sword or anything like that. Thank you. Anyway, Kurosaki, I froze and couldn't follow after you. And even though I, oh, and even though I, even though all I could do was grab onto a bit of your clothing, you still stopped, stopped from, for me. That expression on your face when you look back at me, it was something that will forever be in, ingrained into, me, into my memory. I was certain there had to be some reason for it, pretty much. So now Ichigo is going to release his true power and we're going to see what is it exactly that he's hiding from you watch that you watch does not know about. Because you watch think he knows a lot about Ichigo, but I think he knows a whole lot less. Compared to Mayuri Kurosuji, really, because Mayuri actually has done research on Ichigo. He has taken samples from every from every uh, 
um, Soul Reaper. Um, this Uwash guy thinks he knows he's getting into, but he has no idea because Ichigo's source of power is not just being a Soul Reaper, being a uh, being a uh, Quincy. He also has a he also has a, he's actually a full bringer as well. You remember, and on top of that, he has. They, they mentioned he has a bit of of the uh, spiritual energy from the Haro that was left behind after he lost his powers from that battle he had with Aizen. But question is, will the Haro return? We don't know, but it might. But let's see what happens as we progress through the series. Let's see if he actually gets everything back like he used to have it. I needed to buy some time to unleash this Quincy Retsu because there's someone I needed to jolt awake. His katana is turning white. So get ready, because you remember there was this one character, it was like anti-Ichigo basically, it was the Halo, the katana turned white. It was Tenzin Sangetsu, but it was the white version of Tenzin Sangetsu, then you have more like of the iron-like, dark clad, crimson red version of, um, it's the Black the Sword itself, but the energy is crimson red, because he had the black katana from Tenzin Sangetsu. Now my question is, Will he have two now instead of one? We don't know. Now I see. So that was your end game. So he was holding back this entire time to get used to the ratio of a Quincy. The, t the two separated, white and black, have finally become one. So as I was alluding to, Ichigo has two sides. He has the hollow with the with the white red suit, and then he has Tenzo Sangetsu with the Crimson Retsu, and it seems like they have finally separated and become two different entities, but actually have become one to create a much stronger persona and a much stronger Ichigo Kurosaki, of course. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today. And it looks like he has a hollow, so it looks like that's confirmed I was right. It looks like he has a hollow, because I want you to take a look at his left eye. It looks exactly like the hollow, so I'm guessing he has the hollow with him still. And those little patterns he has in his face, I guess that's exactly what that is. It's like the markings of the hollow just on his face. So that's pretty interesting that he still actually has it. He was actually combining his um, Quincy with his um, soul um, reaper energy and actually create this uh, this conglomeration of everything he has learned, including full brain. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me today, and have a great day. And nonetheless, you know this this. Uh, this form of his really looks boss. And yeah, I was right. To confirm, you know, he has his soul reaper. If you actually look to the right at these at this last panel on page 19, you look at the right of his head, he has this, the horn sticking out when he fall a spot at number four, which is Ukiura Cipher. He still has the horns. And you remember Ukiura cut the other one off. So this is the reason why he has one horn instead of two. So overall, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you thought about this reaction review. And mainly about this chapter, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below and also leave a like. If you want, you can follow me on Twitter as well. And stay tuned, I'll have a whole lot more videos for you guys. Of course, mostly video game updates. So, um, you know, overall, so far, ending on a good note. Let's hope that continues. And let's see where this battle, let's see how intense this battle is as we get towards the end. And I'm not one to brag, but I think Uryu being a turn rider, not being, being a... Being a um, Quincy, not a Stern Rider, being a Quincy, um, although Quincy and Stern Riders are the same, generally speaking, because Stern Riders are getting given by you, watch the Quincy's. He probably has a secondary form that he will awaken to. Um, we don't know what that is as of yet, because if you remember, if you, split the, 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 um, if you remember, he used to release this form where he used to take out this little um, sword for the Reishi, and he would use it, but he also had like these uh, Reishi wings as well. So that's something. Um, to, to know and remember that when he has a good amount of ratio, he can release like these wings and these uh these swords that he has in the back of his clone he can use the Jela Snyder and all that stuff all these techniques that he has um and the pentagon technique as well so thank you very much for joining me today and have a safe day